Hello and welcome to a new series about complex analysis. And before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now, this is part one in the series and we just start with a short introduction and some basic definitions. So the topic is called complex analysis because it deals with functions defined on the complex plane. More concretely, we consider differentiable functions f with domain c and codomain c. So you see, it's different from our real analysis course, where we have the real number line r as domain and codomain. Now, soon we will see that this makes a major difference in the definition of differentiability. And from that, a lot of strong theorems will follow, which indeed don't hold in real analysis. However, since the real number line R is a subset of the complex plane C, we can often apply these theorems even if we just consider some real functions. For example, a real problem where complex analysis can be really helpful is calculating an improper Riemann integral. This could be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function x times sine of x divided by 1 plus x squared. Now indeed, finding an antiderivative of this function is really, really hard. However, just calculating the whole integral with complex analysis is surprisingly simple. Indeed, the result we find is a number slightly larger than 1, namely its pi divided by e. How to do this simple calculation here, we will learn in this course. However, of course first we have to start with the basics. And I already told you, in contrast to real analysis, we immediately start with differentiability. The definition first looks the same as in real analysis, but it is way more powerful as we will see. Now, in order to understand this new definition, you will need to know some basic facts. First, you need to know how to work with sets, and of course, you also need to know how to calculate with complex numbers. If you have problems there, you find everything you need in my Start Learning Mathematics series. This is a whole playlist that covers all the basics you need for this course here. In addition, it's also good if you already have a basic knowledge of some topics of real analysis. For example, you should know what a continuous or a differentiable function from R to R is. Also, it could be very helpful for you if you already know what a power series is. For all these topics, of course, my real analysis series can help you. However, you don't need to watch the whole course, some videos about these topics might be sufficient. Ok, by knowing this, I now think we can start with the course. The first part will be about some definitions we will definitely need throughout this course. First, I can tell you the complex numbers form a set with a distance function. Formally, we call such a construction a metric space, but don't worry, it's not complicated at all. It just means that the distance between two elements of the set makes sense. And of course, we can immediately visualize this in the complex plane. This means that a complex number z can be found in this plane. And on the x-axis we find the real part of z and on the y-axis the imaginary part. Now, you can imagine that we have a second complex number here we call w. And now what we want to do is to measure the distance between both points. Indeed, this is what we calculate with the absolute value in c. And what we need is the absolute value of the complex number z minus w. Now, such a notion of a distance is important because with a distance we can say what a convergent sequence is, what limits are and so on. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to say that a sequence gets closer and closer to a given point. Indeed, we have to measure this closeness. Hence, now we are able to talk about sequences of complex numbers and convergent sequences. So, a sequence of complex numbers is denoted by Zn, where n goes through all natural numbers. So, formally, we just have a map 
that goes from the natural numbers into the complex number c. However, we will always write the sequence in this form. And now we are able to define what it means that this sequence is convergent to a fixed complex number a. It just means that the distance we can measure between zn and a gets smaller and smaller until it reaches zero in the limit. This means that we can just look at a sequence of real numbers. Namely, the sequence of the absolute value of zn minus a. This is by the definition of the absolute value a sequence of real numbers, of non-negative real numbers. And now in the case that this sequence of real numbers goes to the limit 0, we call the sequence of complex numbers Zn convergent to A. Now, if you don't remember the definition of convergence for real numbers, let's recall it. So we find that for all positive numbers we can call epsilon, there exists an index we can call capital N, such that for all indices afterwards, so n is greater or equal than capital N, we get that the distance between Zn and the point A is less than epsilon. So you see, this is exactly the definition we learned in the real analysis. However, now we can visualize it in the complex plane. Now, this formula with the distance less than epsilon means that we can draw a circle around A with radius epsilon. With this we get that eventually the sequence members Zn lie inside this circle. So only finitely many can lie outside. And because this whole picture here is so important, we call the inside of the circle an epsilon ball. And for the notation we use a capital B with index epsilon. Moreover, the middle point A here we put into parentheses afterwards. Now, by definition, this is the set of all the complex numbers W with the property absolute value of W minus A is less than epsilon. So, this is the definition of an epsilon ball in the complex plane. Okay, because you now know what a convergence sequence in the complex numbers is, you also know what a continuous function between C and C is. In fact, it has exactly the same meaning as for real functions. Hence, small deviations, small arrows in the input should be translated into small arrows in the output. Indeed, this can be formulated with sequences. Therefore, we say a function is continuous at the point Z0 in C, if for all sequences of complex numbers called Zn we have that if Zn is convergent to the point Z0 then also the images f of Zn are convergent with limit f of Z0. Of course here we used a common notation that tells us that a sequence is convergent to a given point. No matter which notation we use you should remember continuous at a given point just means that convergence in the input implies convergence in the output. Okay, so with this we have the definition of continuity for complex functions. Therefore, the next thing we need to define is the important notion of differentiability. This is what we will do in the next video where we actually start with complex analysis. Now, if you have any problems with these definitions in this video here, please check out my real analysis course. There I talk a lot about these definitions for real functions. However, if you understand it, you can immediately translate this to complex functions. Okay, please also note the PDF version of this video you can find in the description, as well as a quiz about this topic. Then, I hope I see you next time. Bye!